now let me discuss about the amiodarone of the class 3 agents right amiodarone of the class 3 agents so if you take this particular amiodarone amiodarone it is one of the longest acting agent right this is one of the longest acting agents and if you take this particular amiodarone the t half of this particular amiodarone is around 3 to 8 weeks right the t half is around 3 to 8 weeks and it is one of the longest acting anti arrhythmic drug now if you take another important point regarding the amiodarone, amiodarone it possesses the action of all the anti arrhythmic drugs, right? This is a very, very important point. So, it possesses the property of all anti arrhythmic drugs, right? It possesses the property of all the anti arrhythmic drugs that is it has sodium channel blocking action right it has the sodium channel blocking action it has beta blockade action it has potassium channel blocking action and not only that, it also has calcium channel blocking action, right? Not only that, it also has the calcium channel blocking action. Now, because the amiodarone has the property of blocking all these particular channels or it also has the beta blocking property due to this mechanism of action it is having widest anti arrhythmic spectrum right so because of all these this amiodarone it is having widest anti arrhythmic spectrum right it is having widest anti arrhythmic spectrum now the another important point is this particular amiodarone it carries less chances of causing torsades d point is despite the prolongation of the qt interval right see what we have discussed these particular drugs they block the potassium channels and thereby there will be prolongation of the action potential duration due to which there is prolongation of the qt interval and due to which there is development of torsades d point is but the important point regarding the amiodarone is that this particular amiodarone it carries less chances of causing torsades d point is right this amiodarone it is having less chances of developing torsades d point is right less chances of having the development of torsades d point is now, if you take this amiodarone, amiodarone it contains iodine, right? Amiodarone it contains iodine, right? And how much of the iodine? Approximately 37.5%. That is the reason why this particular amiodarone can result in hyperthyroidism. Right, that is the reason why this amiodarone can result in hyperthyroidism. Now, we have a similar drug to that of amiodarone that is dronadarone. So, similar drug that is dronadarone, it do not contain iodine. Okay, so similar drug dronadarone it does not contain iodine right it does not contain 
iodine. Now, the other important point regarding this amiodarone is number one, it can cause hyperthyroidism because it contains iodine. The other important point is this particular amiodarone can also cause hypothyroidism. Right, this amiodarone can also cause hypothyroidism. Now, the question is how does it con cause hypothyroidism? It causes hypothyroidism by inhibiting the peripheral conversion of to T4 to T3. Right, what will happen in the biosynthesis of the thyroid hormone is like you take the peripheral step right from the follicular cells of the thyroid gland T4 is released that is tetraiodothyronine. This tetraiodothyronine in the presence of the enzyme 5-D-iodinase right in the presence of the enzyme 5-D-iodinase T4 is converted into T3. Now, whenever you give this particular amiodarone, what does this amiodarone will do? This amiodarone will inhibit this enzyme that is 5-D-iodinase. Once this enzyme is inhibited, then peripheral conversion of T4 to T3 does not occur and that will result in hypothyroidism because the active molecule of the thyroid is your T3, not your T4. Alright, next. Apart from the thyroid related disorder, you take the other adverse effects associated with the other adverse effects associated with the amiodarone. The other adverse effects include peripheral neuropathy. It will also cause right, it will also cause the myocardial depression and apart from that this amiodarone will also cause pulmonary fibrosis right will also cause the pulmonary fibrosis hepatotoxicity right it will also cause corneal microdeposits right it will also cause the corneal microdeposits and as well as the photosensitivity right as well as the photosensitivity right so if you take this amiodarone what are the indications of amiodarone remember amiodarone is indicated for the treatment of refractory ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation particularly in the setting of acute ischemia right so if you take the indications of the amiodarone Right, if you take the indications of the amiodarone, the indications are for the treatment of refractory VT or VF, right, refractory ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation, particularly in the setting of acute ischemia. Like, for example, you take myocardial infarction, right, it is a setting of acute ischemia. So, in such case, there may be chances of developing VT or VF. And in such clinical scenario, the amiodarone is useful. Now, this particular amiodarone is also safe to use in individuals with cardiomyopathy and atrial fibrillation to maintain the normal sinus rhythm, right? So, the other indication is in patients with atrial fibrillation to maintain the normal sinus rhythm, we give this particular amiodarone. Next, the other point is this particular amiodarone, it can be used for the prophylaxis of almost all arrhythmias except torsades depointis, right? So, it is also given as prophylaxis in all arrhythmias, right? Except torsades depointis, right? Except torsades depointis. So, these are the few important points regarding the amiodarone. So, let me shortly revise about the amiodarone. Remember, amiodarone, it is one of the longest acting agents among all class 3 anti arrhythmic drugs. And the half-life of this particular amiodarone is around 3 to 8 weeks. 
and this particular amiodarone it possesses the action of all the classes of antiarrhythmic drugs that is sodium channel blockade beta blockade potassium channel blockade and as well as the calcium channel blockade now due to this property right due to this property it has the widest antiarrhythmic spectrum and other important point is that this particular amiodarone it carries less chances of causing torsades depointes and thereby it does not cause the polymorphic ventricular tachycardia right next this amiodarone it contains the iodine approximately 37.5% and because it contains iodine it can result in hyperthyroidism and you have a similar drug to that of amiodarone that is dronadarone this particular dronadarone do not contain iodine next the other important point is it can also cause hypothyroidism by inhibiting the peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 the other adverse effects of this amiodarone includes the peripheral neuropathy myocardial depression pulmonary fibrosis hepatotoxicity corneal micro deposits and as well as the photosensitivity and if you take the indications of this particular amiodarone this amiodarone is indicated for the treatment of refractory ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation particularly in the settings of acute ischemia and remember this amiodarone is also safe to use in individuals with cardiomyopathy and atrial fibrillation to maintain the normal sinus rhythm and this amiodarone can be used for the prophylaxis of almost all antiarrhythmias except torsades depointes